Welcome to the first episode of UBTV and Epigrammed Comments debate series. I'm Cameron Skader, online comment editor at Epigram, and welcome to the Clifton Wine Bar, where we will be discussing uh, key issues and problems that have arisen throughout the week with two people who believe in different sides of the um, of the debate, and we'll be ensuring that we can uh, be as impartial and as free and open to discuss whatever we think. And this week we'll be talking about safe spaces. So, uh, in the news. Recently, there has been the story that the journalist Michaela Rong uh, refused to speak at the university due to the safe space policy as she was vetted by the Students' Union for her uh, opinions and she also cited the supposed no-platforming of Roger Scruton a couple of years ago. Um, the Student Union's safe space policy sets out that a safe space is that each and every member should feel welcome to participate in empowering, non-judgmental and non-threatening discussions, activities, services and events. Members should be free from, fe from fear of threats, intimidation, harassment, and the deliberate or neglig negligent creation of unsafe or unwelcoming conditions. So the safe place policy essentially exists to create a free and open a, um, space for debate so people don't feel threatened by potentially uh, oppressive or um, homophobic, racist, sexist discourses. Um, we're going to open it up to our two debaters here. Uh, Max, let's start with you. What do you think of the story and what do you think of space, safe space policy as a whole? Should the SU have it? Well, I think that they should. I think it, um, as you said, it is there to make sure that people feel safe in their university. Um, now, Michaela Wrong was slightly um, awry in her opinions in that the university does not have a no platforming policy and the university does not have a safe space policy. It is the students' union that has a safe space policy. Um, and it is there in order to make sure that people feel safe while they're at university. So I think, how can it be a bad thing? She was invited by the International Affairs Society, which is a student union organisation, and therefore she would have been vetted for her opinion. Is that not wrong? No, that's not wrong at all. That she should be vetted to make sure that she is actually going to be coming here and putting forward her opinions and engaging in a debate in a in a nice and um, pleasant manner. So she's not going to be here to incite violence or hatred in any way. Hi, I'm Max Langer. I'm 19, I'm a first year film and innovation student and I'm from Northampton. Um, I believe safe spaces are really important for looking after the student body as a whole um, and that they, they help make debate more informed through our university. So Lottie, what do you think about vetting opinions? Um, well, I'm completely against safe spaces. Um, I. I don't defend Michaela Wrong's uh, actions here. I think she should have used her platform to actually debate the uh, to speak against safe spaces with this uh, with the SU. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I think that safe spaces. I I just don't agree with them. I think that university should be about diversifying people's opinions, and I think it's important that you're exposed to controversial opinions and views in order to strengthen your own, and also you can defend yourself in future. Uh, my name's Lottie Musgrove, I'm 20, I'm a second second year history student from Guildford. Um, I think that safe spaces are infantilising students and they have been detrimental to the social justice movement as a whole. Uh, now the safe space policy says that <coughs> if you have any reservations about a speaker, ask members what to think about them, make sure you fill out an external speaker form and submit it to the uh, email and email your speakers to tell them about the safe space policy. Now that those that process would have been implemented by the International Affairs Society uh, and no doubt Michaela Rong decided that that was too stringent uh, in terms of censorship of her views and censorship of what she might say. I think she felt that um, it might her speaking at the uh, university might uh, form as a silent endorsement of these safe space policies. Is that not true? No, it's, it's, it's not. She's by coming to speak at the university um, at um, the oh, sorry, what what uh, what international affairs society? It, the international affairs society by coming to speak at the international affairs society. She's not endorsing these practical practices. She is coming to speak um, to the students and. Um, she should be, as um, Lottie says, she should be able to use that um, platform to say as she wishes. She's simply being better to make sure that the students that she will be speaking to will not be adversely affected by her views. Do you not think that the safe space is just a way of ensuring that minorities and oppressed voices who are so often silenced in our society don't, are, uh, are provided with a, a space that um, can be truly equal and therefore opinions are equal whether you're gay or straight or cis or trans? Um, do you not think that that is what a safe space policy is? 
I do think that is what a safe space policy is, and I I think that's good. Obviously, they're made with the best of intentions, but the only way you can really stamp out oppressive views is if you challenge them directly and if you discuss them, and if you essentially no platform people, if you you know re- remove their ability to say their opinions, how are we going to sort of overcome them, basically? Now, we've touched on an interesting um, point, which is the conflation of no platforming and safe spaces. Um, and just to discuss this, because it's been... Uh, it's been sort of misrepresented, I think, in uh, the discourse, in what Michaela Rong said, and in how it's been reported, in that the SU has a safe space policy, but it does not have a no-platforming policy. Um, would you support a no-platforming policy if it did exist? No, I don't think it should at all. Um, no-platforming is um, can be abused in many, many ways. The safe space policy is there to make sure that students are safe, and no-platforming policy is there to censor um, student discourse. If a safe space policy existed where uh, the speaker was vetted and it was decided that their views created an unsafe space, do you not think that uh, their removal of being able to speak is no platforming in essence, therefore the safe space policy can act as a form of no platforming? No, the safe space policy is there um, so that you can vet these um, speakers and find out how their views may be um, reflected onto the student population. It is, there is nothing within the safe space policy that says you can disinvite, you can no platform speakers. It is there so that pe- people go into these talks, listen to these speakers with all the information that they should before they walk into those lecture halls. And do you not think, Lottie, that a couple of years ago, Miley, uh, the very famous uh, sort of controversial right wing speaker, Miley Yiannopoulos, was invited to speak here at Bristol, and he did, and he talked about feminism, and he talked about all his very, very controversial views. Do you think it's right that someone like him should be given a platform to speak at a university such as ours? I think it is. Um, I don't I don't sort of support anything Marlon Napolis has said, uh, but I do think that it's important to listen to <laughs> controversial opinions. I think that they, by listening to someone like that speak, you can solidify your own arguments against them. So you can sort of argue against him, you can challenge him better if you actually hear what he has to say. Um, and secondly, uh, I mean, Michaela Wrong said that um, journalists, activists, they're actually silenced in more oppressive regimes. And I feel like by by no platform being Miley Annapolis, you're sort of on the other side of the spectrum from that. But people like Miley Annapolis and Katie Hopkins, for example, they, 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 their raison d'etre, they're like their reason to exist and, and provide their, their controversial opinions is because they're constantly given space to spout whatever they, whatever they want. Like, isn't their whole existence perpetuated by being invited to speak at universities such as ours? Yeah, they are, but I think that people should see this as an opportunity to sort of speak up against them, and you know, you can always challenge these views, and you can't you can't challenge these views if you don't hear them, and that's that's how I see it. What do you think about that? Well, these views, especially with the example of Katie Hopkins, I think we all agree that, well, I think the three of us here agree at least um, that her views are not representative of the students of, of Bristol, um, and so by having her come and speak or um, the other speakers mentioned, um, you're bringing in opinions that no no one really feels safe around. Um, students will feel, um, especially from minority um, areas, um, the LGBT community, they are going to be they're going to hear um, opinions that may deeply affect them. And so, by having the safe space policy and by being able to filter out in some um, respect these views, you're actually protecting the students, um, which is that the, the SU and the university have a role in doing. But how can you sort of diversify and broaden your own opinions if you won't listen to other sides of the debate and other people's opinions? I mean, if you keep listening to the same sort of views from the same people that the SU actually let speak to us, how can we actually, like, yeah, broaden ourselves as people? Isn't yeah, that the point the, of you? The, 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 uh, Things that they get coming to speak about, I don't feel like are up for debate. People coming here to spout homophobic and um, racist views, they shouldn't be up for debate. People shouldn't be questioning their own views on these things because we all agree people shouldn't be homophobic and they should not be racist. Yeah, that's true. But um, I mean, how far we wouldn't be uh, anywhere near as progressed as we are right now if people hadn't actually decided to discuss these issues with people. I mean, if you look at the work of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, the suffragettes, they actually went and challenged the views that people held against them. So I think it's that's why I think it's so important that we that we listen to people like that. Well, the safe space policy was enacted as a democratic motion by the students' union. It is there because it is reflective of the views of the students at large. And so as 
as opinion changes within the student body, the safe space policy will be updated as people bring forward um, amendments. And so uh, you bring up suffragettes, um, Martin Luther King, who, who challenged the views. As the students' views are changed by such external um, influences as then, then so will the safe space policy. And that concludes our first episode of our debate series. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, and thank you so much for our guests. Uh, next time we'll be talking about Brexit and its implications for students. Uh, so do be sure to tune in. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.